Hello everybody, this is Tim again, here with my review for Fire 13 Part 4, the final chapter. Called bullshit on that final chapter my ass, but let's jump into this fucker. Uh, I got my deluxe edition here for Fire 13 Part 4, the final chapter. Cool cover, I like that. Jason meets his match. Well, it's true, he does kind of meet his match. This is pretty much the end of the, of the scary Jason. Uh, after this, Jason becomes a pure icon. 100% icon and is the hero of the films. Well, not counting part 5. Part 5 really don't count anyway, but uh, from 6 on, Jason is, is the hero. Um, this film is directed by Joseph Zito, who also directed another film I like, Red Scorpion with Dolph Lundgren. Um, film stars Kimberly Beck, Peter Barton, and Crispin Glover. That's right, baby. Crispin Back to the Future Glover is in this. Music by Harry Manfredini. I like the score in this film. Once again, I enjoy the score. Um, jump straight into the film here. This is a really good film. This is my second favorite film of the entire franchise after the first film. Uh, even though the title is a lie. <laughs> to jump straight into the film, picks up directly after the ending of the third film. Even at the same exact location, the paramedics are there getting to transport Jason's body to the morgue. Which is cool. Once again, continuity. Fucking... A, <laughs> but uh, they're transporting his body to the morgue. Obviously, we know Jason isn't dead. You can't have a Jason movie that Jason. Jason's gonna come back to life. Uh, but they drag it out for a while, which I like to make uh to make you wonder when exactly is he gonna pop up, which I thought was cool. They got his body at the morgue. At the morgue, you got this guy named Axel and his girlfriend there, and um, Axel's like this fucking annoying ass guy, but he's he's pretty. He's got like the best line in the entire movie. Where uh, he's try trying to fuck this nurse and Jason's hand like falls down and hits her on the leg and she jumps up and she like screams and he's like, holy jumping Christmas shit. <laughs> if you, you can clip, the clip is probably on YouTube. I can't do it justice. You should definitely watch it. It's funny as fuck. Uh, but uh, Jason's played by Ted White in this movie. Uh, this is my second favorite Jason after Kane Hodder. Ted White is great in this movie. Jason's like a fucking powerhouse in this film. He's mad as shit. He ain't fucking around. He's <laughs> fucking taking people out left and right. He ain't taking no shit. And I just love it. You know, you got Axel who dies first. Jason fucking wakes up at the morgue. Comes up behind Axel. Grabs him by the head. Fucking takes a surgical saw, I believe. Puts it on his neck. Slices his throat like that. And then fucking takes his whole head. Twists it entirely and completely around. That, the, the gore effects are fucking awesome by Tom Savini. I love them. Uh, this, the effects in this film and the kills are great. That uh, that kill was fucking just fantastic. I loved it. And then you got the next kill where he, Jason grabs the nurse, holds her up against the wall, stabs her in the gut with a knife, pulls it down like that. You don't get a lot of gore or anything there. And it, it, that was, the kill is good, but uh, it's a little bit of a letdown for me because I already had like the awesome kill, so I expected something that kind of went along more with that one. Like graphic wise and it didn't so I was a little disappointed in that but it wasn't bad nothing you know nothing to complain about just just something that kind of got at me a little bit and then once again this Friday 13th movie is no exception you get a badass fucking opening credit scene where you got Jason's mask flies directly towards the screen and not once it fucking explodes and then you got the final chapter pops up in its place it's like hell yeah baby makes you almost almost believe that this is the final chapter or at least at the time <laughs> But that's a fucking badass way to open a movie. You introduce the new characters. You got uh, Tommy Jarvis, my favorite hero of the Fire 13 films. Period. Enough said. I played by Corey Feldman. I like Corey Feldman. I like uh, I like Stand by Me, the Lost Boys movies. I hate the second one. I like one and three though. I like Corey Feldman. He's great. You got the uh, you got Trish, the character Trish, who is his sister. That actress is fine. You got Mrs. Jarvis, their mom. She does fine. Uh, then you got. Fucking group of teenagers who rented out a place like right next to them. And uh, you got Crispin Glover, baby. <laughs> Crispin Glover. I love Crispin Glover. He just cracks me up. He's fucking hilarious. I love him in Back to the Future and just about everything he's in. Even shitty movies he's in. He can he can, he always amps them up and makes them at least watchable. I, I love Crispin Glover. He's so much fun. Uh, and you got him and his friend. And it's fucking... Just the dialogue between these two is hilarious. This is my favorite group of characters in any Friday the 13th film. These characters are my favorite group. I mean, everybody all together, including the Jarvis family. All these characters are my favorite group of characters in any Friday the 13th film. But uh, you got Crispin Glover and his friend, and they got such a hilarious fucking dialogue. It is so funny. 
where they're like talking to each other. I just love his dialogue where Chris McGlover's talking about how he, he broke up with BJ Betty because she wouldn't she won't return his calls or have anything to do with him and his friend's like well his friend's name is Ted, the character's name is Ted, he's like, You're a dead fuck <laughs> He's like uh and he uh, Ted uh, Ted goes, Let me put it in the old computer, uh, Jimbo and he's like <laughs> fucking typing away like that and then he looks up and goes Computer says you're a dead fuck. <laughs> he's like, he's like, uh, there, there is no computer, and, and Ted goes, aha, and there's no Betty either. <laughs> like I said, the computer don't lie. Ah, that was that's just so funny. I love that shit. That just fucking cracks me up. But um, so they're into the camp. You got Mrs. Voorhees' tombstone, Pamela Voorhees' tombstone, which I thought was that was great. Uh, a little continuity there. I love that. Uh, they make it to the camp. Well, it's not a camp. I don't know why I said camp. I keep, this is not a camp. I was you know, having flashbacks of the first movie there for a minute. But no, this is not a camp. But they make it there. They're uh, living in the place next door to the Jarvis families. Um, you got this guy in the film named Rob. He's like a Jason Hunter. He's hunting after Jason because his sister, Sandra, the character from the second film that died in the double impalement scene. Uh, he's hunting after Jason because Jason killed his sister. And it seems like he's been hunting after Jason for like a month or two. Even though this film only takes place like a day after part three, so I'll, like it's like two, three, and four all take place like days apart from each other. But that's just a little minor thing. I mean, as long as they can, all films, all franchises have continuity errors. But as long as the continuity in them is decent enough to where you can understand what's going on, then it's not a problem. I mean, honestly, that falls under the "who gives a fuck" category. I know some people complain about that, but seriously, who gives a fuck? I mean, that's not that big a deal. It does not take away from the enjoyment of the film. But uh, that's just me. Um, so you got Rob, um, Trish kind of has like a little crush on him, uh, they kind of flirt together a little bit, he kisses her on the jaw, shit like that, uh, Tommy Jarvis, uh, excellent character, I love Tommy Jarvis, he makes like special effects stuff, his stuff is like so fucking high tech though, <laughs> that this kid should be like working for movie studios already, it's like so radically advanced, of course the name Tom, uh, or, uh, Tommy, or whatever it is, it's like a tribute to Tom Savini, who came back to do the special effects in this one. He also did the special effects for the first Friday. Um, so his, and the fact that his character makes, like, that special effects stuff is obviously, like, a tribute to the character of Tom Savini. Which is cool. I like that. I really enjoyed that. Um, as far as the kills go, well, you also, you get two fucking twins in this movie. Two hot-ass, like, twins with accents. It's like, twins, baby, Yeah! Yeah, you get two hot twins in this film who uh, join up with Crispin Glover and his groups, his group of friends, and they're all staying there together. They're like having a party and everything. You get, uh, oh yeah, as far as kills go, uh, Crispin Glover and his friends are on the way to the house. They um, they pass by this fat girl on the side of the road eating a banana. She's fucking sitting there eating a banana, and then uh, Jason comes up behind her and grabs her off like, the top of the hair of the head, stabs a knife like straight through the back of her neck, and it comes out the front right there, and she's like squeezing the banana real tight as she's dying. <laughs> That was entertaining. I like that scene, like uh, eating a banana just at the wrong time, I guess. But I thought that was, I thought that was entertaining. I like that scene. As far as the rest of the kills go, uh, they're having the party and everything. Um, the twin, the two twin girls, are, like hitting on different members of the group, and they hitting on this guy named Paul. His girlfriend gets jealous. She goes out to like take a, she goes out to try to get him to follow her. I guess is what she's wanting him to do. Uh, she goes out and gets on a fucking raft out in the middle of the water. Jason fucking leaps up out of the water, grabs a hold of her, and uh, stabs her from underneath the raft, and it goes up through her back, I believe. And this actress has got like the goofiest faces ever. Like when she's dying, she's like, <laughs> "This is like the stupidest face I've ever seen." But uh, the kill was okay. And she's got another scene in the movie where she fakes like she's drowning, and I'm like, "Okay, I don't need this shit again. I don't need fake drowning." It's like when they're all skinny dipping or something like that. She's trying to get her in the water, I believe. Well, trying to get her friend in the water who's like the, the virgin girl who uh, is thinking about having sex with her boyfriend but is not sure yet. And she's like trying to get her in the water and she pretends like she's drowning. And I'm like, I don't need this fucking shit. Not more pranks like this. It's become stale at this point. Fourth movie in. I already know she's not really drowning. I don't need this shit. But uh, that's a small uh, little nitpick there in an otherwise terrific film. And, obviously, and my second favorite of the franchise. I love this film. I'll be honest. This film... And the first one I love both to death. And there's other ones I love a lot too. I really like the second third one both. But if I had to pick like my two favorites, it would be the first one and this one. But uh, yeah, you got that stupid scene. And uh, she gets killed in the rafts. Uh, 
she's got a goofy ass face there, goofy ass kill, like her dying face, and kind of silly looking. But she does alright. Uh, you got the two twins who get killed. Uh, one of them decides to fuck Crispin Glover. He gets Crispin Glover dancing to like a fucking song, and he's like, like jumping up and down every which way. <laughs> It's fucking hilarious. I love it. I I can't do it. Ju Once again, I cannot do it justice. Can't do it. I can I just can't do it. I don't have the talent. But the scene is on YouTube. I'm 100% sure it's on here somewhere. Watch it. It's fucking hilarious. I love it. Uh, but uh, you got a uh, one of the twins want to fuck him. They go upstairs. They're fucking. The other one decides to leave because I guess she just says this party sucks, she wants to get the fuck out of Dodge, or she ain't mad because she ain't getting none, so she wants to leave, uh, she's going outside, you get a cool scene here where the lightning is like striking, and it strikes all at once, and you see her shadow, and you see Jason come behind her and stab her straight to the back like that with a, I guess a, maybe a spear or something, I'm not for sure, uh, I couldn't really tell in the dark like that with the lighting, but it was still fucking awesome. That was cool, he stabs her in the back, she dies really cool way like that just by seeing her shadow, but then you get another scene like the, the camera goes to something else to the kids in the in the house party and then goes back and he slings her against the wall with the spear stuck in her and I'm like, you don't need that. That that was that doesn't need to be there. The death scene with him just stabbing her like showing the shadow was cool enough and I you didn't need that extra shot. So one of the twins is dead, uh Chris Ben Lover goes downstairs, the other twin gets pulled through the fucking top of Ted White fucking leaps through the window straight towards her, grabs her and slings her like all the way fucking out the top of the window. She flies all the way down, lands on top of the car, it's like BAM and then she the whole like the windows shoot out in the car like bust and she fucking falls off onto the ground. That was awesome. Terrific action scene. Joe Zito has like a really terrific uh, action like vibe to this movie. Like the action scenes look really cool. I just fucking love them. And that was awesome death scene right there. I, I love this. I, I love this to this day. Crispin Glover goes downstairs. He's talking to his friend Ted. And he's like, huh, let's get some wine to celebrate. And he's like in the kitchen. He's like, where's the corkscrew, Ted? Hey, Ted, where the hell's the damn corkscrew? And then Jason fucking rams the corkscrew through his hand. <laughs> that was so fucking, that was just so funny. It's like, even Jason has a sense of humor. But that just cracked me up. And then uh, Crispin Glover jerks around and fucking Jason hits him in the face with a meat cleaver and his whole head is like shaking when the meat cleaver in his fucking forehead. That was awesome. I love that. Makeup effects with everything for that was fucking terrific. And then you got, uh, you got fucking Ted who's like watching a old-fashioned porno film. <laughs> like a comedy porno or something like that. And I, that was funny as shit. Just that idea of him watching like old-fashioned porno or something like that. But uh, he... The projector messes up, and he's standing in front of the screen, and Jason comes up behind him, fucking stabs him to the back of the skull with a butcher knife, and then jerks him back, and his head hits back towards the screen like that. That's the only effect in the film I thought was a little iffy. Like, seems, seems a little dated, because for one split second, you can tell it's a dummy. All the other effects look terrific and really held up, really held up really good, to me anyway. That was the only effect for that one split second that it looked kind of outdated. But that's, that's the only one. Well, I can, one second of a scene is not enough for me to complain about it at all. If you can convince me everything else looks perfect in just one second, and one second is the only thing that I, I have a little problem with, and you've succeeded uh, in making a good movie. <laughs> but, um, so Ted's dead, uh, uh, the virgin, the virgin girl who's thinking about fucking her boyfriend finally decides to fuck him. They're fucking in the shower. She takes off out of the shower. She goes out of there. He's singing. Jason fucking busts his hand through the shower. Once again, Ted White playing badass. I ain't taking no shit, Jason. Uh, <laughs> I don't fuck around, Jason, which I love. And he fucking rams into the, grabs the guy's face, pushes him directly against the back against the wall, fucking crushes his entire face up against the wall. It looks so cool, and the makeup effect looks good, and I love it. I love it. I'm a gore man. I love my gore and my Fridays, and this is no exception. So he's dead. Uh, his girlfriend comes back in there. Uh, she finds him dead. She decides to get the fuck out of there. Her death scene just seems kind of quick, like they wanted to hurry up and hurry and hurry and just kill off the, the last remaining of the teenage teenagers uh, group. And she runs downstairs, and then all at once, Jason just throws an axe to the door. She gets hit in the chest, falls over dead. That one seemed kind of quick. Uh, it was cool. I mean, an axe, to the, a, a fucking axe to the chest is cool, but it just seemed kind of quick, like they were trying to hurry up and just finish off the last remaining survivor or a teenager in this group. So that that was cool, but uh, just seemed like they were trying to hurry. So uh, Rob uh, and uh, well, Mrs. Jarvis comes home from jogging. You don't get a death scene from Mrs. Jarvis, but you know she's dead. I know some people think, well, did she die? Didn't she? What happened to her? I mean, it's obvious that she's dead. She turns around, and looks, and just screams, and then the screen cuts off. They just didn't want to show you her death. I guess because she's an older, sweet woman, so they didn't want to show you her die. 
but uh, you get the idea that she's dead. It's obvious that she's dead. She's not going to turn around and scream like that without seeing Jason or get ready to scream like that without seeing Jason. Jason's not going to let her go, so obviously she's dead. She just got killed off camera. But uh, in an alternate ending, you get to see that he drowned her in the bathtub, which was kind of neat. So obviously she was dead. I mean, obviously she is dead. So you got Rob, uh, the Jason Hunter, and Trish and Tommy are the ones left. They're... Uh, they, uh, they're they trying to figure out what to do in this situation. Jason, of course, messes up uh, the power. They can't call out. Uh, well, he messes up the phone lines. They can't call out for help. They can't get the police, so they're fucked uh, in terms of getting help. Uh, Rob and Trish decide to go over to the teenager's place to try to see if Jason's there to check on the kids and or check on the teenagers. They're over there. They discover Jason's there. Rob's down in the basement, and Jason pops up, starts hacking Rob with a rake. Kills Rob, and you get to hear him say, "I'm he's killing me, he's killing me," which is uh, which is cool, uh, because you don't even see like any blood or guts or anything, but just the way he's the actor playing it with the screaming and stuff comes out really well. But one thing I didn't like is Rob's like, you get the idea that Rob might actually be a challenge for Jason because he's like hunting for Jason and everything all this time, and you think maybe he can do something against Jason, but he just dies like a little wuss. I mean, he doesn't even doesn't even seem like he tried to fight back. He just fucking dies so easy. I just felt like that was just a cheat for me. I just want this. I wanted the character to fucking try something. Shit. <laughs> Jason killed your sister. Put up some kind of effort, but he just fucking dies like nothing. But and the real hero of the movie is is pretty much Tommy. But um, well, Trish is more of a hero than Rob, really. But um, so uh, Rob's dead. Uh, Trish makes it out of there. You get a stupid scene where she like opens the door and one of the twins' dead bodies is laying there, and all she gotta do is step over and just keep going. But instead, she decides to go out the window. That was fucking stupid. I don't know why that was there. I guess to just add more suspense, but it's still fucking stupid. You can't add to stupid shit. <laughs> you can't throw in something stupid and expect the audience not to notice it. Just add more suspense in. Because she should have just stepped over the body and just kept going. That was stupid. But uh, she makes it back over there to where Tommy is in their house. She starts boarding up the house with nails and everything. Rob's body gets thrown through the window. Jason has to throw somebody's body through the window. So it might as well be Rob. <laughs> Jason busts through the other window, grabs Tommy, Trish uh, hits him in the side of the neck with a hammer, uh, Jason, uh, Tommy gets loose, uh, Jason busts through the door, grabs the hammer, fucking slings at him, and hits the wall wide open. That was cool, once again, pissed off Jason, I like. Uh, plus, he still got the axe mark in his head from the last film, I enjoyed that, that's cool. That's a cool carryover. Uh, Jason's falling, I, I think I said in the last video that it was on the left side, but I think it's actually in the right side. But uh, Jason's chasing him up, up the stairs. Um, he starts hacking through the fucking door with an axe. Trish rams a TV on his head. He falls down. Uh, of course, Jason isn't dead. We know he's not dead yet. That was just not a good, that was not a cool enough way to take out this uh, powerhouse of a character who's been killing people for three movies. But uh, so Jason gets knocked out. Jason gets the axe, swings at Trish, misses. He just got to choose which one to take off after. He decides to take off after Trish. He takes off after Trish. Uh, Trish jumps out of the, Trish runs back into the teenager's house and jumps out of the fucking top window, and it kind of looks like a stunt fall, but it's still a really cool action scene. Once again, Joseph Zito brings a really action feel to this Friday that wasn't in, uh, 1, 2, or 3, but, uh, it's really cool. She falls directly out of the top window, lands on the ground, uh, she's not dead, Jason takes off after her once again. Tommy was supposed to leave, but he didn't. Uh, Jason tries to come up behind her again in the Jarvis house. Well, she's in the Jarvis house again. Jason tries to come up behind her. She swings the machete at him, misses, and she hits Jason in the hand and fucking hacks directly through his hand, like, all the way down through here. And it looks really cool, and his hand's, like, split in half, and he, like, kind of grabs it like that. That's cool. I like that effect. Once again, good special effects. Go Team Savini, because <laughs> the shit still looks good. So Jason keeps coming after her. She hacks Jason in the chest. Uh, Jason gets mad, takes her down on the ground. He's trying to kill her with one hand because his other hand is hurt and damaged. Um... Tommy shows up. Tommy has like fucking shaved his head and everything to try and fix his uh, clothes to try to make him look like little Jason when he drowned. Try to psych Jason out to get him to like remember who he used to be to confuse him. Uh, I guess that's what he was doing. I mean, it's not really clear. Uh, you, you get uh, well. Tommy sees a picture of Jason when he was little, so you get the idea that he's trying to do this to psych Jason out. But I'm not really sure exactly what his plan was. I mean, what? Uh, but uh, it doesn't really. It, you get enough information on it to where it makes good enough sense to where it's it's where it's cool enough. And plus, just the idea of Tommy being smart enough to do this because he likes makeup effects and everything to make himself look like 
uh, to dress himself up like little Jason to try to fuck with Jason's mind is still a badass thing. It reminds me of the ending of part two, which is also cool. And this is pretty fucking cool too. So Jason gets freaked out and thinks, well, he doesn't get freaked out. But he kind of gets really confused thinking it's his little kid self. And he starts like reaching out towards Tommy and then Trish comes up behind him with a machete and Jason flips back around. He fucking whacks off. Uh, she fucking whacks off Jason's mask. His mask comes flying directly off in the camera and lands on the... Well, uh, well, it flies directly into the, right on the fucking floor. Perfect landing with the mask. It looks, looks epic. It looks really cool. Jason's face looks, I like Jason's look of his face better in this one than the one in part three. But, um, but I still really like the one in part three as well, like face-wise. But I like the one, I like his look in this one better than the one in the third one. Because his face, like, where the axe mark is and everything, he just looks a little bit more decayed looking he looks more dead looking really in this one than he did in the they did in two or three. He looks more he looks more like a zombie type look in this one really. Uh but uh or at least a more corpse like look. So he gets his mask knocked off, he's coming towards Trish, and then fucking Tommy jumps down and fucking grabs the machete, badassness totally here from Feldman. Uh, Jason lunges around, Tommy fucking swings it, whacks him directly inside the head. Jason falls down, uh, the machete slides like straight up through Jason's face like that, and then cuts out like the side and falls down, I believe, and it like slides straight through part of Jason's face. That was fucking awesome. That was, this is the, this is an epic fucking death for this character to go out. So he gets sliced like that, and then you think Jason's dead, and then all at once he starts moving his fingers, and Tommy sees it, grabs the machete, starts fucking just whacking down on the, the Jason's back. I believe it's his back. You can pretty much tell that he's hitting him in the back. So he just fucking brings the pain to Jason. No wonder Jason hates this character. It seems like he does in part six. He uh, he fucking gets the pain brought to him by Tommy Jarvis. So next scene, you got Trish in the hospital. Jason is dead. Uh, for now, <laughs> Jason's dead. Um, then they're she's wondering like, was it normal or whatever for Tommy to act the way he did? And they're they're telling her that he pretty much acted the way he did just to defend his sister and you know. In crazy situations, people are capable of uh, really extraordinary feats, and it was perfectly normal for him to uh, to t attack the killer to save his sister at the time. So they send Tommy in, Corey Feldman comes in, and uh, she grabs a hold of him in a hug, and you get a close-up on Corey Feldman's face where he's like got like a, a weird look on his face where you kind of get the eye, and you hear like the ch -ch 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 sound like for a second, I believe. Where it makes you think that he, this character might go completely crazy after the incident he's been through and might be a new serial killer who kills people around the Crystal Lake area too. Which, uh, I wouldn't have mind if they had a different killer. They tried the same thing in Halloween and it never worked out. Well, the studio butt fucked them on that. That was a better idea though in Halloween than here. With them, like, trying to make somebody else the killer, that would have been cooler to me. Why not make Jason's dad the killer? Fuck it. I wouldn't have minded if they would have brought, just bring in another Voorhees. As long as it's a Voorhees, I'm fine. Tommy Jarvis being the killer, though, if they would have worked it good, I could have bought it and been fine with it. But the way they portray it in Part 5 is just fucking horrible. But, uh, or the way they try to turn him into the killer in Part 5 is fucking just stupid. But, uh, I would have been okay with Tommy Jarvis being the killer. I'd have preferred it to be a Voorhees. But with Tommy Jarvis being the killer, I think he would have had to have uh, came up with a really effective story to get him to transition completely into a killer and I don't think they accomplished that in part five but I would have been okay with someone else being the killer besides Jason at this point Jason gets a, a terrific death and if you wanted to you could finish uh, the character off with this film and the real Friday the 13th franchise is pretty much the first four this is the to me this is the true Friday the 13th the Friday the 13th franchise right here the true Friday the 13th franchise I really I mean the whole every movie is part of the franchise but for me like the core part of the story is done here. You could just stop here watching the movies after the first four. Um, but if you're going to watch any other ones, skip five. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, easily a four-star film out of a possible four. I really enjoy this film, and I'll see you guys again with a lackluster, fucking horrible sequel, A New Beginning. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys have been enjoying my Fire 13th reviews.